This is the Average Guy Network, and you have found Home Gadget Geek show number 570 with guest Mark Robson, recorded on April 27th, 2023. Here on Home Gadget Geeks, we cover all the favorites gadgets that find their way into your home news reviews product updates and conversation all for the average tech guy i'm your host jim collison broadcasting live from the average guy.tv studios here in a beautiful bellevue nebraska it's spring and we're going to spend a lot of time talking about that today especially with your grill and of course we'll post show with probably a few show notes you might want to check it out out at the average guy.tv don't forget this episode's affiliate sponsor is nespresso and listen a big thanks to many of you uh, you know, basically, we threw out this coupon code. So go to Nespresso.com, put in MQU328. You get $40 off your first machine there and uh, in a free capsule dispenser if you use that. Uh, a bunch of you have. At first, it started, Mark, it started kind of as a little trickle. I got one, and then a couple of weeks would go by, and then I'd get another one show up. You know, they send me an email when folks use it. Like last week, three or four people just all of a sudden decided they wanted better coffee what do you, what do you do, Mark? What do you do for coffee? What's your what's your go to coffee? Uh, we have a Breville grind and go, so it it, it oh, grinds them nice fresh one. at the top. Yeah, makes, that's uh, a nice one. Yeah, we but it's drip, that. right? It's, it's drip. drip, so it grinds them and then it drips. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We do. Um, we use Lavazza beans. Um, we go through about uh, two and a half pounds every three weeks between two of us. Um, it makes coffee. It makes at least eight cups a day. Um, Makes it at five forty-five in the morning. Yeah. Um, set it. And set it at it, regular. Just every week or every day, you have the same schedule. Yeah. 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 yeah it's and it's got a the nice one of the nicest things about it. It's got a stainless steel insulated carafe, so there's no heater element for the carafe. Oh, good. Yeah. So it doesn't it yeah. doesn't turn it into tar. Right. Like you yeah, can it have it an bake. hour and a half later. What's that? Yeah. It doesn't bake. It doesn't in bake the, it. You yeah. can have an hour and a half later. It still stays, stays hot and it still stays the same uh, strength. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, we're not, usually up between, cooking. right. You know, we use yeah. it by about six fifteen, six thirty. So you hear it grinding in the morning by the time you come downstairs, it's already made and you smell fresh ground coffee every, every morning. Yeah. Christian Johnson has one of those. I stayed with him for a couple of days uh, back oh, a couple of years ago. Really good coffee. Although with an espresso, throw the pod in, close the lid, hit the button, walk away, come back a few minutes later. It's ready to go for you. So that's been in this and I still perk my coffee on the weekends. I was doing during COVID. I was perking it every day. You're but, using, uh, co- you're reusing coffee. <laughs> well, a little bit. <laughs> a little, you heard that, right? I heard Aaron that was, one. Aaron was mortified. Aaron uses an espresso and, and Brian Friedlander, who we had last week. In fact, big thanks to Brian Friedlander, who joined us last two weeks ago, assistive tech. And, uh, and we, we had a lot of great conversations around that. Yeah. If you want to, if you want to jump in on the Nespresso, give it a try. MQU three two eight Nespresso dot com. Get forty bucks off your first machine. Uh, big thanks to our Patreon subscribers uh, as well. If you're part of that Patreon team, um, very helpful. And thanks for being on the team. In fact, if you join Patreon, you'll get that early access to the full show. Mark and I spent a little bit of time in the pre-show talking about how to kind of prep your grill for winter. And if you want to be a part of that conversation get it easily delivered right to your inbox. You can join us on Patreon. Uh, oh, I just have one plan. It's five bucks. If you want to join us there a month, do it for a single month or multiple months and appreciate your sponsorship there as well. Mark Robson is back. Mark, I think we had John, I'm going to say it was early June last year. We were kind of laid out the gate on the barbecue show, getting things ready, but you've been our barbecue correspondent for the last I don't know, six years. Maybe? I was going to say six or seven years, I think. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We've, and there were some years we did it twice. Like we do it in the spring and we do it again in the fall. We've kind of fallen back to, uh, to once a year, but Mark, welcome. Welcome to the show. Good to have you. Thanks again for having me back. Hey, get us caught up with you just really quick. I mean, you've been a friend of the show for a long, long time. And so for, for long time listeners, they know you, but for folks, maybe just joining us, uh, coming in. Give us a little bit of your background and we're going to talk about grilling for most of the show, but catch us up with you a little bit. Uh, so I'm Mark Robson. I've been actually, I found the show through uh, looking for a solution for Unraid, 
way back when. <laughs> yeah. Um, Mike Howard, yeah. Oh, listening yeah. to Mike Howard talk Mike about how Howard. great it was, oh. and, and I was looking for a replacement for a 2012 server I had at home. Uh, sorry, Windows Home Server 2008 V1, one of those little Acer yeah. boxes, and I built my first yeah. box. Yeah. Um, and that's where I found it, and I started watching the, the podcast on a regular basis, and then uh, Jim saw a conversation between myself and Mike Howard on Facebook one night um, about grills that we had, and he said, like, this is crazy. Like, how many grills do you guys have? And both of us at the time had two. And I think I had, I went through seven grills in the space of three years. Yeah. You were buying and selling them like used cars. Like, yeah, like, yeah I got rid of this one. Picked up this one. I got rid of that one type deal. And it, it worked. It became a, it became a hobby. And, and unfortunately, unfortunately, the first grill I got, I think is about due. It, uh, it started to fall apart again. Which, what do you, what, which one is that? The char grill or acorn, the little okay. steel egg. Oh, really? Yeah, it's okay. it's eight years old. It uh, I went to clean it this week, and the the uh, ash pan almost fell off uh, <laughs> because a piece of weld in the bottom had fallen off. Yeah, and yeah, they do that. So yeah. I got eight years out of it. People, a lot of people only get like two or three out of them, so I can't doesn't owe me anything. And I think yeah. I paid three hundred and seventy bucks for it, brand new. Yeah. So I'm looking around now for a, a ceramic to replace it that'll last me another eight or ten or. 15 years. If, if you listen to the shows over the last couple of years, you go to the average guy.tv, go to search, just put in Mark Robson. You'll see all the programs we do. You know, Mark has been trying to talk me into a Weber charcoal grill forever. And he's, yeah, he's actually found them for me. Like he's gone online, found them and said, Hey, there's one available to you. It's just down the street. Go buy, go buy that one. I'm Mark, sure. still, I still, <laughs> I still have barbecue bought, for sure. I still haven't. I still haven't got the Weber. I did look at a um, a Pit Boss kind of two in one. So it had charcoal on one side and gas on the other. Those would be the two. You know, I've got a. I've got the the pellet smoker now. I've got the Austin XL pellet smoker, which I really love. Perfect that was size. A great buy. Oh, yeah, it was an awesome buy, right? I Five just waited. Or something? No, like four, four hundred. <laughs> Yeah, at Walmart yeah. of all of all places, and they delivered it. Like it, it they dropped it right at my garage door, and uh, I didn't have to because that those boxes are big and heavy, right? Type deal. Yeah. So I think I paid four hundred for it. Um. Uh. So and it's good size. The uh, <coughs> excuse me, the XL is I think kind of perfect for the average griller. Just <coughs> enough space. While I choke to death, Mark, you tell us what you have. What besides that? The egg. What else do you have? So I have two. I have two charcoals. I have two pellets, and I have a uh, uni pizza oven. They're pellet powered. Mm. So twenty-two inch uh, charcoal with a side card on it. Weber. I have a Broil King, um, a small Broil King pellet, which is I think four hundred square inches, and I have a Rectech six eighty, which is probably my favorite of the pellet grills. Um, controllers the best that built. As far as I'm concerned, it built the best. It's the it's just a thing to the tank the rec and tech. reliable. And what's that? That's what the rec tech is the one that yeah, you, that's yeah, my yeah, favorite. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, most expensive though, by, by far, right? For all, those? yeah. Well, the Broil King's not far behind it. Yeah. Um, and that rec tech had a lot of use, it used to be used in the competition circuit by friends mm-hmm. that were in the, the KCBS, so the Kansas City Barbecue Society competition yeah. circuit. Yeah, the guy I bought it off of you to use it and tour around the uh, northeastern US and Canada with it. And well, they're built pretty well. Right? Oh, they're I mean, it's yeah, it's crazy. Like it, it's hard. To, it's heavy. Each grill grate probably weighs fifteen pounds, and there's just mm-hmm. stainless steel bars. Right. Um, the service was. Un- I haven't used them in a while, but it was fantastic. Like I called up saying I need to replace my burn pot because I want to. Sorry, my my hot rod on the pellet grill had seized in the burn pot, so they're going to replace it under warranty, even though the thing was six years old and I wasn't ridden the loaner. <laughs> wow uh, yeah no problem that's a warranty item wow yeah yeah so then i said well i want to upgrade at the same time to a better igniter and they said okay well we're going to credit you the amount of the burn pot off the of new price that's pr- now they're expensive like just they just, are i mean this is their traeger pricing right on this kind of thing aren't they they're they're 1500 bucks for the full-size grill mm. yeah so they're they're at the top end of the pallet they're, they're top end of mid-level grills if that makes sense yeah no for um, sure it's just so weird, Mark, though, because, you know, 30 years ago, I think I bought my first grill for $194, Same you know, here. and and it was, 
Like, and that was, I'm not saying that was top of the line, but maybe top of the line grills back then were 300. And now you can spend two or three thousand dollars on a grill. It's crazy how, you know, how much you can spend on these things. I used to go to a barbecue school, uh, take some classes at night. It was, it was beer and barbecue. So you'd show up, you cook, cook yeah. barbecue and yeah. you have a couple of drinks with it. Yeah. They had a grill inside there that was $20,000 for a gas grill. <laughs> You open up the door yeah. at the bottom in the little case, and it had the signature of everybody who built it. Yeah. So that it's, it's they can get crazy. Like the original Apple computer, you know, yeah. type deal. Um, let's talk a little bit about, so so for folks who, again, if you're new to listening and you want to go back, we've got lots of, of back content on this from all the years. We've done at least one or two shows. And in those programs, Mark always goes through, and we'll do some, here at the end of this program, we'll talk a little bit and show this may be where you want to come to the YouTube channel to see it. Uh, Mark will have some things that he's that he's done. And we'll show some pictures. It's kind of show and tell. But Mark, uh, before we get started, I kind of want to, you know, as we think about, you know, we're in the spring here in the northern hemisphere. Sorry, Australia, that your your winter is on. It's although for most folks in Australia, you can grill all winter. You don't you're, you're not worried about that. But what, when you think about spring, we spent the pre-show thinking about winter, getting getting things ready for winter. What do you do? Typically, what's your routine to get your grills ready for spring? Well, the first one, obviously, is cleaning. And the thing you got to stay away from is those old wire brushes that have the oh, yeah. the, uh, the bristles, bristles like that fall the, off. The, like a brass bristle. Yeah, the, the, yeah. Bristle, the bristles that fall off and get lots of people's throats and... Um, so I, I have one that is um, a continual uh, spiral that works okay. And I have a bunch of the wooden ones. Mm-hmm. Um, and barring all that, I'll just use a bottle of aluminum foil. Just So just pull it out, crumple it up, just rub yeah. it over the top. You can even, you could make a nice hand grip with that even so you could kind of hold it, right? With the, Some with people the, use onions. Yeah. Chop an onion in half yeah. and rub it over it. Uh-huh. Um, but do the you heat it up pretty good. You heat it up first, right? Do you do you do the it onion? in a heat up cycle first? No, like well, oh, anytime grill. you're cleaning yeah, yeah, the grill, yeah. Yeah. you heat it up yes. first. Yeah, that doesn't really work that good if it's not. I've also seen people use pressure washers, so you dismantle the whole thing apart and use pressure washers. And I've seen them use um, flat wheels and grinders uh, on the inside of it oh, to yeah. clear off all the creosote and everything else. That can, well, not creosote, but all the the, the yeah. smoke and everything else that can build up on the inside. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. I know one guy who's pretty meticulous and, and he takes a flap wheel to it every couple of years just to bring everything back to ground zero. Yeah. And I've, I've used cast iron, you know, I've cast iron grates that I bought specially for this grill that came from another grill. They just happened to fit this. And I think I'm on my fifth or sixth season, uh, uh using them. The areas, like I can tell the areas that are in the hot spots cause they're getting kind of thin. Yeah. But, but the rest of the grill. Oh, yeah, well, the grill is still there. I mean, I yeah. I think I can get it probably another eight or nine years. How how um in the spring? How important is it to maybe inspect the whole thing? Just because like when your uh, squirrels ate the, you know the 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 foil the tube. tubes, yeah, yep. that could, that come kind of, down. How important is it to maybe just look and maybe do some inspections before you uh, fire? I think that's up? critical. I think also smelling. Right, you turn it on. You shouldn't be smelling unburnt gas when you're barbecuing yeah you might want to look underneath it like yeah. fired up and then look underneath just to make sure there's not a flame coming right, out all, this, the all this, the spiders are also notorious for getting in there too for some reason they want to get inside the venturis yeah yeah you mentioned in the pre-show mice are yes uh are kind of can can be kind of an issue you might want like have you ever fired one up with a live uh animal still hidden somewhere in the grill that scurries out no, it, normally, so when I find mice, you can usually see the droppings first, but I have yeah. pulled the drip pan out, found a mouse nest underneath the drip pan with the mice in it. So it adds another yeah. level of problem. <laughs> Gro- grossness yeah. to the whole thing. Do you, so say I get a, I get a, a, a mouse in there in the spring, I find it. Is the thing ruined? I mean, do I got to just, do I got to kind of no. just throw it away at that point? What, how do I recover from that? burn high heat <laughs> glove up um respirator like or everybody's got covid mask now so yeah. put some sort of protection on yeah, yeah. um uh lots of gloves lots of uh paper towel garbage bags 
like on the, on the smoker is different than the, than the gas grill because at least you have a flat platform to work off of. So if I see it, typically what I'm doing is um, taking all the foil out, vacuuming the whole thing out, um, cleaning it out as well as I can, cranking the thing up as hot as it'll get for half an hour or an hour just to try and burn off anything that's in there, let it cool off, clean it back up again and, and reassemble it and refoil it and go back again. Is it hard on the grill to run it at max temp for half an hour to an hour? I mean, does no. that shorten the life at all? It shouldn't, like, right. especially the good grills. You're, you're not going to... Yeah. Like this thing, the thing I have, well, a lot of the pellet grills now actually have a sear, a sear option on them where you can put grill grates on them and get the thing up to five, 600 degrees. Yeah. The broiling I have will go up to 600 degrees on the thermometer or thermostat. So if you can get, if you let it get that hot, it'll actually go that hot. You need to do that with a clean grill because if you try doing that with a dirty grill on a, on a pellet grill, you will get a, a fire inside the grill. Mm, yeah. It'll, um, it'll light that grease on back on fire. Yeah. Yeah. I had that yeah, in the fall. I was doing a lot of chicken wings in the fall. Like every Friday we'd ha have friends over and do chicken wings on the grill. And we had a, we had a grease fire that went right on the bottom, off the bottom of the, uh, it went off the drip pan into the bottom of the, the barbecue. And I had to put it out with baking soda. Well, and it's, it's interesting how destructive a fire, you know, you turn these things on and you crank them up and you get them super hot and they're fine. But you get a fire in there, which isn't doesn't seem to be as hot as, you know the, you know whatever the 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 fire pot the fire pot yeah, and it seems like it just does the the fire itself does more damage yeah because the yeah. the fire's at the edge of the if you have a fire in your fire pot it's, it's in the middle of the uh, barbecue typically or it's in, it's away from the sides mm -hmm. if you have a fire in the grill it's typically at the edge of it which is where all the grease is collected yeah. So yeah. there's been a lot of people that have burnt uh, Traegers <laughs> because for whatever reason, certain models of Traeger had bad fires. And I had a friend who had the same thing. She was cooking, I think she did ribs one weekend and then did burgers the next. And she had a massive fire. I'm like, you need to be cognizant of what the grease is yeah. sitting in. Yeah. If you're doing yeah. low and slow, you won't get a fire. If you do something high and fast, you're going to get a fire. So you have a chance been... of getting a fire. We've been using the, or I've been using the frog mats uh, yep. that Mike, Mike recommended way back in the day for primarily for, uh, the beef jerky that I've been making and they get, you know, it's low and slow. So they, they get loaded up with that, both the barbecue sauce and the fats from, and there's not a lot of, we use London broil. So not a lot of fat on that meat, but, um, but they should get loaded up. Too. yeah, oh, for sure. Right. So I take. I take those frog mats over to the grill, fire up the grill to super hot to kind of clean those mats before I use them again. And I have to be really, really careful because one time I came out and they were just all on fire. Like I had to pull them out and throw them in the grass to kind of Step put them, on out, them a little you know? bit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, you got to be careful. And they were, I mean, it was, that grill was on fire, you know, so leave it open. And it just seems like those fires, just be careful folks as you, as you're out there. I mean, some of those fires can be, can be in, you know, if your grill is close to the house, yeah, make sure I've just moved all my, all, all, all my stuff, you know, kind of away. Um, when we think about technology, it seems like grills over the last five years have gotten super technical. Like you can get Wi-Fi in them. We're talking about pellet grills that have great augers in them. We're talking about custom temperatures across the, the, the grade itself. All this kind of technology built into it. As you're looking at maybe the next two years, have we kind of plateaued on technology or are there still things coming that you're looking at as far as grill technology? I think we pretty much plateaued. I was just trying to, I thought I had a link to, um, yeah, I have a screenshot here when I cook my, uh, I don't know what I was cooking. I think peppered out beef, but it, it shows from my phone. It was a screenshot of the temperature graph of set point versus actual versus you can see when you open the lid up, um, that was Wi-Fi on grills was a big thing. Um, now it seems like everybody's doing it. You can get, uh, Komodo Joe is a big, uh, ceramic company. They came up with their own pellet grill and they also came up with a, um, a PID controller for it. When I first got into, pe into charcoal, that was one of the things I liked was I actually picked up a PID controller for a laboratory with a fan. It was some guy making uh, a kit for them. And that was the first. Uh, heat control and you start talking to people about it and like you're doing what like well i can put my barbecue on at nine o'clock at night and it keeps it at 250 until the next morning 
yeah. but you don't have to worry about it. Like, no, it just does it. Like that was out of this world. Now everybody yeah. can do it. Yeah. Um, there's been some innovations like, uh, Again, Komodo Joe came out with something called a slow roller, which is supposed to be better for smoking. So they're, they're just tweaks on the existing stuff. Um, Master Chef, I think it is, came out with a charcoal, um, a charcoal-based uh, fan-controlled unit. Um, so it uses one called a, there's a uh, I don't remember the name of it, but it's basically a gravity design charcoal. So you fill up the stack with charcoal, charcoal drops at the bottom, catches on fire, and smokes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, Master Chef, I think, came out with a fan-controlled version of that. So, again, it's got a PID controller on it. Um, everybody now has PID and Wi-Fi and Bluetooth reporting. And I don't see, in the ones that are out there right now, I don't see anything new and exciting coming out that's very different. But everybody now has their own. Like, I think you can get a Pit Boss Wi-Fi. You can get a Green Mountain Wi-Fi, Rectech Wi-Fi, a Trigger. Like, everybody has it now. Yeah. And the that thermometers, big, too, right? I mean, there's... Yeah. A thousand thermometers out there. Uh, we, by the way, some folks have asked me. We do have a meter um, affiliate spot. So if you're thinking about buying a meter for your grill, go to theaverageguy.tv/meter, and uh, that's kind of the affiliate link for M E A T E R. Um, if you want to do that, I love my meter. That is a awesome tool, both meat temperature and ambient temperature on any piece of meat that you got in the grill. Uh, you can now get blocks of four. So you get four, four temperatures and, and it, it's the control um, sensor for it as well. So I've, I've kind of like that, but there's a, tomorrow. listen, I've said this every time we podcasted, you changed my life when you taught me how to cook by, by temperature. Me, by temperature. Yeah. 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 You changed my life. Yeah. And we do that inside the house. We, we have, um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, sure. uh, thermopen, a uh, thermopen. Uh, we have them for the, for, for inside the house as well as outside the house. Like it's, yeah. Use it all the time. I think we have a Thermal Works. Is that is, yeah. would that be the right Thermal Works? I think that's the one I bought. It's been great. I taught my daughter how to do it, and so now when she's cooking meat, it's we just it's all the temperature, not time. That's, you know, or that's not the one look. I have. Yeah, so I have a Thermal Works that's designed for inside the kitchen. Um, I think it's got two probes on it and a timer, and it, it sits on the counter and has a little angle. Uh, yeah. screen. Yeah, ours is magnetic, and it just we just put it on the back of the stove. Yeah. And it's just always there to get it done. Hey, you answered this in chat, but uh, let's bring Jay's question. He says, our grill turns on fine, but as soon as we put food on it, the food catches fire. <laughs> Any thoughts on that? I think it's, it's. I've seen it before. Um, different companies call them different things. I think some of them call them flavor deflectors or, or flavor savers. But those deflectors that go over top of your burners. If those tense, are a little yeah. tense, right? Yeah. yeah, they're either worn out and they're letting flames through, or they have enough food built up on them that they're that's what's catching fire, and you get little fires going on top of that, and then you, the grease dripping onto that stuff on those little fires catches onto your food on fire. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sometimes too, I find the grease, you know, it drips because we've I've lowered my temperature. I'm not cooking at those super high temperatures anymore. So the grease actually sticks a little bit more to the uh, the underside of my uh, grates, my you know yep. these cast iron grates. So if you get that hot or that flame comes up, it'll catch that grease on fire, which then catches the food on fire. When so I had I've a been, gas grill, when oh, I had a gas okay. grill, sometimes you had to just let the thing catch on fire. You had to burn off all the the crap that was in there that you couldn't clean off. Yeah. Well, uh, that was hard on the stuff. The, you, you mentioned this earlier. I, I've been using the wood paddles to clean the, the grates and then kind of tilt them to the side to get in there, to, to get those pieces off. And then I, I do this real caveman thing where I just use it like a hammer and I just bang on the grates and it, it, it knocks the stuff down. Right. And then I think, especially on a gas grill, I think we need to clean them out a little more frequently, frequently yeah. than we do that stuff builds up on the rocks or the tents or some of those kinds of things and it doesn't hurt like you said throw a pair of gloves on pull the grates off go in pull the rocks out get a good inspection of your of your burner make sure your burner sized properly at that point or maybe be you know jay in your case you may have a flame out on your burner where the it most burners are stainless steel in that after a while, the heat degrades them and they get a little rusty and some of those kinds of things. 
and you may have a whole section of holes that are gone. And so now you have a big flame coming out of the, of the burner and that's a good time to inspect it. So maybe it's time, Jay, maybe it's time to pull the whole thing apart. Just clean it up, shake the rocks off a little bit, get that grease off the rocks or whatever you have down there. You know, it might, it might be a good time to do you with, with all this grease, I would think about some people would want to use a degreaser and soap and some of those kinds of things. Is that okay? There to, are barbecue to, cleaners. Okay. For that. Yeah. But yeah. I just thinking it, it's, it's funny because now that you've had a pellet grill, you've probably been inside your pellet grill more in the year you've had it than you have in your <laughs> gas barbecue in the last three or for four sure. years. I only do it once a year <laughs> in the spring, right? Is when I yeah. clean out my gas grill. Yeah. But your pellet grill, you're dismantling every couple of months. Once a quarter. Foil down. Yeah, probably yeah. once a quarter. Yeah. Cleaning it out. Vacuuming, vacuuming it, it out. out. Yeah. Yeah. So the, yeah. the having a pellet grill is, is I had a friend the other day. He said, yeah, I saw pellet grills. I'm looking for a barbecue today. And I saw a pellet grill. I'm like, you don't want a pellet grill. He said, mm -hmm. what, what do you mean? I said, a pellet grill is a hobby grill. You have to realize <laughs> that there's more maintenance to it. There's more cleanup to it. It's fun, but it isn't just a gas grill, throw a couple of steaks yeah. on it, fire it up and you're done. Right. It, it's, right. it's like most things that are hobbies. They take time and they take a lot of patience and there's a learning curve to them. And you have to want to learn. And this it, guy was not going to be that guy. It's not hard. Like it's not. I, I have found, you know, I keep my vacuum. I have a shop vac that I just keep out by the deck. And when I need it, plug it in, vacuum the thing out. Um, K Katie J is telling uh, Jay that he can't cook. And he says, that's okay. He's, that's what he was thinking. But his wife does most of the cooking and that. Um, Joe says this, he says, I switched to those grill stones for cleaning grates. Too worried about the wayward wire from the brushes, Mark. You mentioned yeah. that a little bit earlier. And I like I use the wood. I think those grill stones are okay too, right? Because they're pumice kind of well, even material. If you, even right? if you swallow them, they're not going to get stuck in your throat. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, and I think we tried all of them. Like it's it's uh, we tried the the thick Brillo pads that you have to use when they're cold. We've tried the wood. We tried the continual wire. And I haven't used a a bristle brush in probably three or four years. Yeah. I like the wood one I got, I got on a clearance in the fall, you know, our local big box uh, store clearance outs, all their, their barbecue stuff in the fall, late fall, probably right before Thanksgiving, you can get some good deals. And I bought, I picked up one of those paddles. The nice thing about the wood and the stone too, is it starts to shape around the size of your, your grates. Right? If you only so have one you, grill. Yeah, yeah. Well, maybe sometimes you can buy one per grill, right? Just have one sitting there, right? That, I uh, have that, I have a couple of them floating around. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I I bet you do. Well, so technology, what it's you know, yes, maybe not the speed. Well, I'll, it's hard to tell because you know sometimes you think about you take your eye off a market for four or five years and it accelerates super fast. That was a incremental jumps to get there, and I think you know. We didn't get to pellet grills overnight. That would that had kind of been an incremental jump in there. Yeah, but 30, 40 years by the time they went from sort of non mainstream, um, really oddball to you can't walk into a hardware store without seeing them now. Oh, for sure. And they're super expensive. Like I, I never would have spent $1,200 on a grill, but it, you know, down at my Ace Hardware, I can pick up a Traeger, the low end Traeger for like 1200 bucks, right? Wow. They were selling up here for seven. 700. Yeah. Oh, well, maybe, maybe I've, maybe my, maybe my numbers are off on that. It's very, it's very, very possible. Maybe but the high then, end ones, maybe the high end ones are the, 20. yeah. Well, yeah. The high end ones, the newest high end one, I think from Trigger is now $10,000. <laughs> well, okay. So yeah, it's got an infrared, yeah. um, what's it got in the side an induction hot plate, I think on the side of it. And it's got multiple levels and, but it's, it's like cars. If you want to buy it for whatever price you want to buy it for, there's something out there for your market. Do you think, let me ask you this. Do you think it's best to buy these things used from, from people who bought them, used them a few times? They just want to get rid of them. Is that the way, like if I was going to get a Traeger, would that be the right way to get a Traeger? That's what I've done. Yeah. I have bought, I bought two girls new out of the seven I've had. I bought two new. And I'm, I'm shopping right now for my eighth one. Yeah. I just keep my eyes open for it. Trying to, I'm trying to find yeah. a Yoder. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that, so the, the rec tech, 
Rectech currently right now is fourteen fifty US with five bags of pellets. From them. From them. Yeah. That's they only sell direct. Right. Right. Um, and that's uh seven hundred square inches of cooking. They have some smaller ones too, but that's that's the one I have. And that's for me, that's a nice size. I can do one of your parties, I can do everything all the meat I want on it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's a, a question in chat. Um, Brian says, probably not the most popular, but I still like grilling on my charbroil electric grill. Joe says, hey, dude, that's just a skillet. Those have those have gotten real popular too, right? Is that like, if I've got a, a griddle, like that's what it is, right? Big cast iron. No, uh, he's talking flat. about char grill or electric grill. It's, it's um, the ones I've seen actually have a grill grate with a electric heater element underneath them. Oh, oh, okay. And we're not talking people, about the, like you would put pancake, you would make pancakes. No, on. no, no, okay, no. Okay. If it's saying it's a chart, uh, what did you see? It's a char griller electric grill. Um, my sister-in-law has something like that. And cause she didn't want to mess with gas. She didn't want to mess with, um, uh, bottles of propane, natural gas hookup pellets, char She just wanted something that she can cook burgers over a grill. Yeah. So she yeah. picked up a little electric power grill. But some people on on condos and townhouses, that's all they can use. Yeah. Well, those grills are real popular right now. I mean, if you go to Walmart or if you go to any big box store to get it, you can find all sizes of those kind of, and they're they're all made for outdoors. You know, they're oh, you're talking all about the griddle, griddles, yeah, like a blackstone griddle. Yeah. Yeah, blackstone. Yeah. 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 yeah that that is like a big pancake cooking indoor. Yeah. <laughs> Greasy spoon yeah, but style. they're super popular. Like people oh, are crazy. loving yeah. those things right now. Yeah. And those kind of originated in England and uh, Australia. Okay. If you went to Australia, they didn't have barbecues like we have. They have you know, they have a flat top griddle with a uh, cover yeah. over for outside. Yeah. Yeah. And they're cast iron, right? It is like a skillet. It's to Joe's carbon point. steel, it's I think. Skillet. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's. I don't see the. For me, it doesn't work. It doesn't fit what I want. I wouldn't be using it enough. I don't think. But I got friends who have them and love them. Yeah. Well, and I know a lot of folks cook bacon on them. It's a great yep. way outside. It's it's not as messy. The grease, again, you get that away. We've actually been baking our bacon w recently. You know, take a take a cooking sheet, put the grill tin foil on it, throw the bacon on it. Ten minutes at four twenty five fan. Ten minutes, pull it out, flip it over, put it back in for another ten. Nice and crispy and perfect. I don't know, Mark, if I ever want to go back to cooking bacon any other way, conventional. Have you, in have you done it on your pellet grill yet? No, I have not. Well, that's that's the same thing as the oven, yeah. but with wood flavor. Well, I'll have to try it. Would I do it on the, should I do it on the, the frog mats or just right on the grill? We Like I have frog mats. I don't use them. Okay. I um, love my frog mats, but. but. I, I have jerky racks. When I'm doing jerky, I do them on jerky racks. Okay. So they're actually stacked so I can fit. Uh, like four rocks in my in my yeah. uh, rec tech, um, ma mostly because it makes it easier to get them out to the uh, barbecue. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like I have two that are elevated, and then the base base unit, so I can put literally three. They're probably uh, sixteen by twelve racks at once. And I'll do two of those in my grill at once. I did. Sm I smoked some cheese uh, last weekend, and that's what I did. Uh, four racks of it. I had 11 pounds of cheese on it. It was just two trips of barbecue. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, well, I mean, I guess I could do the same thing where I could put it on a flat, you know, I could put it on a flat container or on a flat rack, Yeah. put tin foil on that, put the bacon on top of that, throw it in the smoker. It would drip off the edges. Right. But still not make a mess out of the, the, um, uh, the drip rack pan. that I have. Yeah. The drip pan. And then, and I'll have to try that. Yeah. Cause I mean, what, what, would I, if I'm going to do bacon on the smoker, do I, in the, in an oven, I do it at 425. What would I do on the, uh, I do it like 275, 300 till it's crispy. Yeah. I, I don't use tinfoil on it. I just put it right on the, on the grills. Yeah. yeah. The, to me, the, the drip pan is designed to pull the grease off anyways. Right. Right. So it's at an angle. It's going to sloop it into a little bucket at the side of it. Yeah. So. Yeah. You can do probably two pounds. Like you have a fairly big, your XL yeah. 1000 XL is fairly big. You probably do a couple of pounds of yeah. smoked bacon on it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 
I have to give it a try. I would, I, I'd use the frog mats for it. That'd be a good way to, to let it it'd grease up those frog mats really nice. Yeah. And then, um, and you get the same you benefit know. from it. Yeah. Now I'll be honest. I mean, since I've really only made jerky, I'll talk about this here in a little bit. We made this whole hog pulled pork that I'll talk about here at the end, but, um, I've captured all the grease in all the things that I've done with the exception of the beef jerky, but beef jerky doesn't drip. Like no. it's, it's very, very little, very lean. Yeah. Yeah. It's very lean meat to begin with. So I've bought those, um, you know, the, the liners, like, the liners and yeah. <laughs> they fill up with rainwater before they fill up with grease. I just, Oh, I, I go through a couple of those problem. a year. Yeah. I bet. Yeah. No, I bet. I, I did 42 pounds of pulled pork. Um, couple months ago uh yeah in january actually it looks like um there was a big pulled pork the big sale on pork shoulder and i got 42 pounds of it i did it all at once and i filled up my grease bucket and i had to empty oh. it up halfway through the yeah it's a lot it's that's a, a lot. lot of that's a lot of pork one of the things while well, we're talking about pork shoulder so one of the things i tried was this whole this whole hog so i bought ribs i bought shoulder i bought ham and i bought uh, a loin okay and i cut them up into two pound sections froze them and then pulled each one of those out in its two pounder thawed them out threw them in a in a container and then just smoked them for six hours and they all kind of blended together right i mean the shoulder shoulder is pretty plain like that's why you add a lot of barbecue sauce to it now as you're cooking it you can add a lot of stuff to it as well but um Man, I tell you what, that ham and that those ribs adding that flavor and texture and the the lo- the the yeah the the loin to it and the it was and I used a processed ham so it was it was salty to begin with yeah. which Mark like that was so then we you just I just brought it in and pulled it all together and well I pulled it all apart then mixed it all together yep a little bit of barbecue sauce. I mean, we, we were inspired by a YouTube video, a YouTube guy who makes that every day with a whole pig. They just roast a pig overnight, then, you know, D D D bone it and mix all that meat together. And it gets it. I mean, it takes shoulder to another level. I mean, pulled pork is good, but like whole pig pork, pulled pork, even better. I got done it. Did, have you ever done anything like that? No, the, uh, but the one I did this time, I'm just trying to share. Share your picture. screen if you got if you got pictures. Share your screen. I'll throw it up on. I the, just got to take a look to see what this. So this is a pork shoulder, and the, the people that had it said it was the nicest one they'd ever, the best one they ever done. Um, let's see if I can find. Okay, the share um, screens down on the bottom. Different place every time, right? Yeah, <laughs> always. Well, Present. between Zoom and Teams and. Uh, all those other things do you for your shoulder when you're doing shoulder do you do much prep to it before um you you throw it on the grill almost none okay so i bought these um the sale was a dollar something a pound so i I think i paid 60 bucks for 42 pounds that is about 30 pounds of pork shoulders pulled out of that 30 pounds, we gave away three quarters of it. So it was, uh, we have some neighbors with new, with, uh, young kids, uh, like a newborn, she's six months old. So we gave them some, we gave some neighbors always help us out some, my stepbrother had a new baby. So we gave them three pounds. Mm-hmm. Um, we gave two pounds to my buddy at work, two pounds to some friends of theirs. Um, uh, we kept, I think we kept seven pounds to ourselves out of the 35 and we gave every, all the rest of it away. You know what I found is we took, cause we would always have a lot left too. And I found we would take it, we'd break it down by a pound a bag and then freeze it in individual bags so that you could pull it any time. And you didn't have to, you know, <laughs> cause like five pounds of <laughs> pulled porks, it's a lot of, it's a lot of meat. Oh right? yeah. Yeah. We, 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 we uh, vacuum seal it. Yeah. Um, so we vacuum sealed it. The biggest bags were two and a half pounds. So we'd vacuum seal it and pound it flat. So it makes it easier. That's just trick I learned yeah, this year. Right. Right. Um, makes it a lot easier right. to manipulate it in the freezer or yep. to stack it in the freezer. It thaws but out did, faster when you do it that yep. way too. Yep. 
Yep. And then reheat it in, in simmering water. Mm -hmm. So that was, um, it's all in kilos, but it's nine. So the top bag's about 22 pounds for 32 bucks Canadian. Well, that's, that's good. Yeah. And I got the two oh, of them. That's really good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we found, even though, Mark, even though with inflation being what it is, I am fine. I'm still finding some really good deals. You got to watch for them. Yes. But I'm still finding some really good deals on meat. From time to time. Every January, Especially February, there's a Chinese New Year up here. So it's, well, it's everywhere, but uh, they have pork sales on just for Chinese yeah. New Year. Yeah. 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 So that's, that was one snowfall. Yeah. So, that's so what do you think? Snow. Okay. Yeah. On the grills there. This is the point. If you're listening to the podcast, you probably want to come over to YouTube. Go out to uh, youtube.com slash, I think it's just Jim Collison. Whoop. Mark. <laughs> Mark closed himself out. We'll get him back here in just a second. But uh, head out to youtube.com slash Jim Collison. I think we'll get you to our YouTube channel. Uh, you want to catch this. Mark's going to be showing some, some, uh, some pictures as soon as I can, as soon as I can get him back, he'll, he'll be back here in just a second. So, uh, Katie J said, I, he, uh, he says, I bake my Turkey bacon in a conventional oven and, and Katie J I do too. Like I, I've gotten really good at bacon in the oven. Uh, just a great way to do it. And uh, and a great way to get it done. All right, Mark's back. Oops. Technical difficulties. <laughs> no worries. No worries. It happens when you're sharing pictures and stuff. It uh, uh, it happens. Um. Yeah, Mark. I think the other thing while you're pulling up pictures here, and we're getting reset. I think the other thing you kind of taught me over the years is to kind of really pre-plan and watch for deals, and then like I've been buying you know, maybe an eight, eight pounds of whatever, and then bring it home, divide it up into two pound bags, freeze it in, in smaller increments. So you can kind of pull it as you need it. Type yeah. Deal. I'll do that. I won't do that for brisket. I won't do that for pulled pork. No, you couldn't. You couldn't. Well, people do. People buy a brisket and chop it in half and, and yeah, only cook half of the time. And, and well, yeah, I'd rather Not cook it good. whole and then pull it, like yeah. separate it. Yeah. Um, with the brisket, I agree with you. I think with pulled pork, you can get away with smaller amounts. If You, you it, can. I'd just rather yeah. cook it all at once. And, no, and for sure. For sure. We have uh, two full-size fridges and a, and a chest freezer, a apartment-size chest freezer for two yeah. of us. So we have room. <laughs> the other one thing I do like that a lot is um, I do a lot of pork belly. Mm. Um, and we'll where, cook up. Uh, where do you an get entire your pork belly? Where do you get Costco. that? Costco. Okay. All right. I'll do up an entire pork belly at once, seasoned up. Um, cook it once for seven hours, vacuum seal it and put it in the freezer and then pull it out as we need it. And jerky vacuum seals really well in freezes. Okay. You can do sure. like after you've cooked it. Yeah. Like 15 pounds of jerky vacuum seal it into one pound bags, two pound bags, and then pull it out as you need it. Yeah. And it amazingly enough, it actually microwaves really good too. So if it's frozen, put a couple of pieces on a piece of paper towel, 10 seconds of microwave because there's no fat in it. It thaws out real fast and. It doesn't last that long, to be honest. I'll do two pounds. They're, it's gone in a weekend. Well, I, I make six, yeah. eight, ten pounds. Yeah. yeah. And I'm the only one in the house that eats it. <laughs> yeah. It, we, we have found, so for, for you, listen, for listeners, if you're trying to get into the smoking, you know, get, getting a pellet grill, the cost justification just to make beef jerky, it, like if you need to get it past the CFO, as Dave McCabe would say, you got to get it past the CFO. The WAF. The, the, yeah. Wife is happens factor. Like, I mean, I think beef jerky is like the price of printer ink when you're talking about, you know, it has it, you know, it's seven to $12 for three to five ounces. And you can make, you know, you get, I get a two pound London broil for 10 bucks, 12 bucks, maybe five bucks a pound uh, on sale. Uh, you throw that in. Yeah. You got Costa pellets. And I, 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 the other thing, Mark, I've been doing a lot of lately is watching for marinade deals. You know, they'll be closing out a marinade somewhere. I got a famous Dave's marinade the other day. I did at six bottles. They were two bucks each, you know, just get them all, bring it, you put them in the pantry. You're going to need them at some point. So I you know, jerky is a third of the cost. Oh, for sure. Easily. Easy, I, I saw some point. Jack links the other day at the grocery store at, at Costco and yeah. I looked at the price per pound and I'm like, 
I'm paying four bucks a pound for the same meat. It, it's yeah, fifteen dollars a pound versus four. And so yeah. even if you take in the ingredients yeah. you gotta put into the jerky, it's still yeah. Well, and it's a million times better. We've done a few events where we've been maybe enjoying some whiskey on the deck. I have the jerky going all afternoon. You smell it when you're out there. We pull it off and just eat it right off the grill. Oh yeah. That's right. Test it's it. amazing. Yeah. You pull it right off and you're like, yeah, it's good. We brought it's some so to our good. friend's cottage so uh, last summer and it, it's not every, like you, you're quite often your harshest critic, but not everybody also has the same flavor profiles as you do. Right. And we're passing it around and one guy's like, oh my God, this is good. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. This, he says, so what else do you bring up? <laughs> and we brought up pork belly, pulled pork, and the uh, and the jerky, yeah. and smoked cheese. Yeah. So that's the other thing. In the spring, I can only do smoked cheese in the spring and fall. So I just did my smoked cheese now for the summer. And how many? I mean, what what kinds of cheeses are you smoking? I did uh, Gouda, Havarti, uh, old cheddar, extra old cheddar. And on one of the bricks of extra old cheddar, I put maple syrup on it. So you have a maple smoked extra Man. old cheddar. How long are you putting those in for? No heat, right? No, and just smoking smoking tubes. Actually, I, I'll try sharing it again and not yeah, yeah. leave the <laughs> chat this time. Um, I, I got a picture when I open it up. Uh, come on. There we go. Okay. And I, and I think, Mark, a lot of people think smoked cheese doesn't that just melt when it can I mean, if even, you do it wrong even the smoke can have can have heat right associated with it it can um that's why you have to do it when it's cooler okay so it was only about uh i'm gonna say 40 degrees when i did this um and for this one i actually pulled the um the drip pan out of my smoker and i put my two i put two smoking tubes and i put them underneath the heat deflector by the burn pot and they sat there for four hours. So there's quite a bit. Some of the little black things you can see on top of it are just some little pieces of the of the smoke residue falling the, onto it. I just those off after. Yeah, the gristle. That's um, but well, yeah, that was how, uh, does that, how does that change? I mean, obviously it tastes smoky, right? Yeah. But but how much more smoky than it you know, than just straight cheese? And oh, significantly. Really? You, yeah. And as soon as, so the trick to this is you you have to put it in vacuum bags for at least a week for every hour you smoke it. Ah, okay. So you're, if you you're had it the same day. It in. Yeah. If you had it the same day, it's bitter. Okay. It's not very tasty at all. Okay. Um, but like six weeks, two months from now, it's going to be fantastic. And this stuff, we have stuff we just finished off in February that we did last spring. You've, you've listened, you've talked a lot about vacuum bagging just on this program. Yep. You've talked about it in the past. If I was going to get a good sealer, what, what would I expect to pay for one of those? What, what would be, what'd be a recommendation on a good vacuum sealer? Well, I had to buy a new one a year and a half ago. I bought the, the food saver one the first time and it lasted me probably about 10 years. And then the second one I bought didn't last very long at all. I got a new one uh, from Amazon, and it was one of Amazon top rated ones. It was about a hundred dollars. Okay. So, and then I buy bags in bulk. So the the bags I buy are a big roll, and they have a little slicing uh, blade on top of them. Okay. Yeah, that's something. If you're going to sous vide, right? That's yeah. another. That's another tool you're going to want to have is a is a vacuum sealer to get. Um, and that's the best way to reheat barbecue. Right. By far. Like it's, well, it's, yeah. I mean, that'd be a great way to, to reheat, uh, pulled pork. Right. Yeah. And yeah. we, I have a sous vide and instead of pulling it out, it's, it's packed away. So instead of pulling it out, I just put it in a pot of boiling water and put it on the stove at like level two for half an hour. Mm -hmm. And that's enough to make it beautiful and juicy. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. and you can do that with any of the barbecue, whether it's pulled pork or brisket or, or, or chicken or anything. Well, you could, as long as you're monitoring the temperature of the water, and right. if you get that water to, 250 and then just let it sit in there for some time make sure because you're when you're when you're doing pulled pork right you're trying to get it to about 200 right yeah but to reheat it if it hits as long as it's getting to about 140 150 that's all you're that matters because it's already okay. cooked yeah 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 
you don't want it stinking hot because you can't eat it. So you, right. you <laughs> I, I typically yeah, put yeah. it like on level yeah. three or four on the oven and yeah. let it sit there for 20 minutes in the bag from, yep. from the fridge. And yep. it ends up stewing in its own little packet of juices. And yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, Slice it's it the open and put it on some, put it on some buns, put on some red buns and, <laughs> and pickles and cheese. And you're, do you, do you toast for pulled pork? Do you toast your buns or do you go? Do it you depends on the day. It depends on how hungry I am. Do you butter? You ever butter them and toast them no. that way? No, never. No, the uh, if I'm doing pulled pork, it's typically um, uh, regular yellow mustard, um, regular yellow mustard, dill pickles, Swiss cheese, Carolina oh, barbecue like sauce. Way. Yeah, yeah. The you vinegary like the, sauce. You like it more vinegar than yeah. sweet. Yeah. My wife loves the sweet stuff. I love the Carol the Carolina yeah. vinegary stuff. You, have, have you ever? For, I have for a recipe that I use called Big so, Daddy's. Yeah. That is my favorite. That I'll make. If we have people over, I'll, that's what I'll make. Is Big da- Big Daddy's Carolina sauce. Yeah, yeah, and that's vinegar based, right? Vinegar based. Yeah, 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 yeah. Apple cider have, vinegar. Have you ever toasted the buns and then buttered them before you did burgers? Nope. You should try that sometime. It's a little like. Like I, I wasn't a big believer in that either, but man, that butter, the salt in that butter adds some really good flavor to the burger. I Depends some, how you like your burgers too. I did some pan fried. Um, we smoked bologna on the weekend for the first time. Oh yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. a bologna. My dad tub. would pan fry bologna all the time. Well, that's the second part of it. So you smoke yeah. it with a crust yeah. on it and then you pan fry it. And then I put, when I was pan frying it, then I put the bread buns in with the bologna to warm the inside of the buns up. So they got nice and crispy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I did that in the weekend for the first time. Yeah. Oh, you, we, we didn't put out the warning in advance. We boys, all the other shows we have, like you're going to walk away hungry. I'm sorry. We didn't warn you, but you might want to go get a snack. Uh, you might want to get a snack. I did just as a side note, our, our bakers, our local grocery store started offering about, uh, I don't know, maybe a pound or a pound and a half of bacon already cooked in cooked pretty well in, in a big flat bag. You could literally just peel it off, open it up, pull the bacon out of it. They were charging like 15 or 20 bucks for these bags retail. Uh, nobody bought them. <laughs> so I got it for like five bucks, which is, I mean, cooked bacon, ready to go. It was pretty good. And then we'd, we'd either warm it up in the microwave or I just throw it in a pan for a few minutes and they would, it would crisp up. Not a bad way to get bacon. That was a pretty good, you that's know, pretty already, crazy. Cause bacon up here yeah. is expensive now. Oh, it's expensive here too. I, when I saw five bucks, the bag and it was like a pound or a pound and a half, I was like, Oh yeah, I don't care how the bacon is. I'm buying this thing. So I, we, 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 we ate a bag. A, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, you go ahead. We had, we tend to buy it from, um, the pre-made bacon at Costco that comes in a bag is already pre-shredded. Yeah. So if we want to add on, if we're making some scrambled eggs, we'll toss them into that or making an omelet, we can toss yeah. them on Twitter instead of having to have cook it whenever we need it. We, it's a nice, simple, easy way to have it. Well, this was the crazy thing about this is it was the weight after it's been cooked, which, yeah. you know, is a lot less. And I thought, okay, wait a minute. They're cooking it for me. They're it's, it was laid out nicely on, on these, on butcher paper. Yep. And so it was laid out nicely. It was like four rows of it and it was five bucks. I was like, I, I should have just cleared them out on it. We threw a bag in the freezer. I took a bag, took all the bacon out and put it in the container, put it in the fridge. We ate it in a week. I mean, we were eating it like snacks. <laughs> we were just like, oh, bacon, adding it to everything, you know, cereal. Oh, I'll put some bacon in my cereal. It was pretty good. It was the last good. time we did, I used the frog mats is when I did candied bacon. Oh, now how do you do, how do you do that? You uh, brush it with, with uh, I'm not sure if you need to do it or not, but we brushed it with maple syrup and then you oh. pat brown sugar onto it. Ooh. And then you put um, a barbecue rub with a little bit of heat onto it and then you smoke it. Problem is you got to catch it just before it turns black. Like it, it's, it'll caramelize and all of a sudden it turns. So you got to catch it just before that. So it's a bit of, bit of problem to make it, but it, when you make it well, it turns out really, really good. Oh. Yeah, now I'm hungry. Anything, uh, Mark, anything new from a food, like, have you tried in the last year, since the last time I had you here, anything that you've tried new uh, that, you, that you've done? I'm looking at my list right now. Um, 
I did tacos al pastor for the first time. Oh, now what's that? Tell me what. Uh, that I'll start sharing some pictures because it's going to be easier to see it than. Um, Basically, it's almost like a a spit. um, It's almost like a a vertical spit. Um, This one's still open. Oh, it actually, yeah, there's quite a few things here. So I'll just, I'll get this screen sharing and I'll start. showing it there's actually a little funny story about this too because i forgot what it was we found it in the freezer thought it out (laughs) and hadn't realized what it was and uh ended up uh pan frying it for dinner one night and it was fantastic Mm. so that's tacos al pastor widen your screen out a little bit if you can can you yeah does that do anything for us yeah, there we go. Perfect. Perfect. That's perfect right there. So that's uh, a vertical spit, pineapple on the bottom, pineapple on top, and a pork shoulder has been sliced and marinated. And then we made, uh, that's what it looks like when it came out. How long? Uh, it was about, actually didn't take very long. I want to say it was like an hour and a half to cook it. And was it rotating or just sitting no, on just top of the vertical, ground? Just stay like that, okay. just like that. Okay. Yeah. Um, that's a, a kit, a pastor kit. So it's got a metal plate at the bottom, then a um, a little standoff off the base, and then you put a piece of pineapple on it, then layer the um, the pork onto it. And then we made, we actually had friends over, so that was a warm green tomato salsa. So I, I roasted all the veggies on the grill, put them into the blender, put it into the bowl, and um, it was actually warm salsa, but like fresh off the oven, off the grill. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, fresh from, salad, from warm, fresh tortillas, t- chips would be. Yeah. Super we're, good. we're doing that too. My wife tried yeah. and she didn't like it, but she, had, she hadn't realized it was warm. Yeah. 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 Um, so that's what those looked like. So that was a fresh taco, the, uh, pastor meat, the fresh cilantro, the warm salsa, mm. uh, fresh pineapple. It looks like a hello fresh meal just to be. Yeah. <laughs> that's what hello fresh does all the time. Yeah. Uh, that's just the regular, I'm just going to whip through some of these, but that's, uh, pretty sure that was a pork shoulder. I did a lot of bark on it. Mm-hmm. Um, getting ready to do some steaks. So it's almost 700 degrees and those are caveman. So they're right on the charcoal. Yep. And a lot of people think like, if you're going to put it on the charcoal, it's going to leave the charcoal on the meat, but that doesn't happen, right? No, you... no. You pick it up. The charcoal falls off. I learned this one from watching uh, Elton Brown. Mm-hmm. Um, the other thing I learned from him is that because the meat is so close to the open coals, you don't get any flare ups. Mm-hmm. You only get flare ups when there's actually room for oxygen between the two of them. Okay. Um, those were corn ribs. So you take corn on the cob and you cut you cut it into quarters and you you uh, smoke uh, them. Oh, so that was something new I tried this year. Uh, what kind of knife do you need to to get through those corn cobs? Like that's you almost Sharp. need like a you almost need like a uh, like a saw blade or something. I mean, no, I, I just use one of my like a nine inch chef's knife. Okay, um, they they were good. I'm not sure I'd do them again, but they were good. I think you have to have the right saw to go with them. Yeah, the the version I've done of the of with corn is soak the corn overnight in water with the husk on, and then put it on the grill and let it let it dry out and cook out on the grill. Um, as the as the husks burn away, it heats up that corn on the inside. It steams it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If if we're doing a lot of people, have you ever heard of uh, cooler corn? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So we do cooler corn for parties. Yeah. Uh huh. Um, these were, uh, mini omelets in the grill. Oh yeah. Yeah. So now, or is that, that container, the, the, the muffin pan, the muffin pan, is it ruined after you, you got it out on the grill? No, no I bought oh, it just okay. for that. I've done them a half dozen okay. times. All right. So in there, there's a bit of hash brown in the bottom. Um, I also did them at Thanksgiving with uh, leftover, uh, stuffing. Mm. so we had a sausage stuffing this year yes so yeah. i filled those up with sausage stuffing and then put the eggs on it and some cheese and a little bit of bacon on it and then cooked yeah. those up yeah that was really good it's a good one like um, quiche, almost like quiche like a crustless quiche yeah uh this is a steaks at the beginning of the, this was about a month ago uh using grill grates on my acorn 
and those turned out pretty good. I was happy yeah. with those. Yeah. Now, why the grill grates over the grates? Um, it gives you, it retains more heat. Okay. Um, it gives you a, def a deflection against the uh, flare ups on top of that. Okay. Yep. Um, they do a very nice finish on them. They I don't do. get the same sort of finish if I try doing the same thing with uh, just a stainless steel. So you're waiting, you're putting on those grates early, heating them up, getting them super hot, right? Maybe like 15 minutes. Okay. Like I put them on the barbecue when the barbecue is getting hot. Right. Okay. Um, and that was actually on a salad. A little steak salad? That was a uh, pear and blue cheese salad with a oh, walnut wow. vinaigrette that we make from scratch. That's delicious right there. Um, that's another shot. Same thing. Oh, candy walnuts or pecans on top of it. T temp on those on those uh, steaks. What what's the uh, one thirty? Okay, okay. Just medium, medium rare. Yep. And here's the cheese. Um, now, one little trick I use. I'm not sure if it shows up or not, but you can see the toothpicks in some of them. Right. I take. I put the toothpicks in before I take them out the bag. Take pictures of them. Put the toothpicks in the cheese when they're smoking, so that when I pull them off, I know which cheese is which. It's the decoder ah, ring. I got it. So one, just for the audio folks, your Gouda may have one toothpick yep. in it. The cheddar's got two, the strong, the Monterey Jack's got three. Yeah. So and I use broken, yeah, I use yeah. half brokens and right, right. this one has the, what looks like two upside down V's in it. And that's supposed mm -hmm. to be an M for maple. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, are you just talking about pouring maple syrup on the thing? I brushed maple syrup on it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And then there's the smoked bologna. Interesting. Is this a gourmet bologna that you bought somewhere, like a tube? It a was tube a tube, but it wasn't. I didn't try and buy a gourmet. It's just okay. hard to find. And it, yeah. this was uh, two and a half pounds for ten bucks. No, that's not too bad. Um, I just wanted something that I, I wanted to try something different. I don't think yeah. I'd do it again. So bologna it, comes out kind of sometimes comes out kind of slimy. This or, wasn't slimy. It was it was yeah. salty, maybe yeah. a little overly salty. Right. Um, right. Okay. It's uh, and that's the other like. There's only two of us in the house, so we had that on Sunday. <laughs> I think we had it again on Monday, and then we had it again tonight. Yeah. So we we now finished it, but it was uh, six or seven meals out of it. Well, um, Americans think of bologna as a bologna sandwich that they got when they was a kid with really cheap mayonnaise and maybe yeah some, a bad american cheese you know so this not the same bologna i imagine a little bit better those are the uh stuffing ones i think stuffing um uh omelets yeah so i've done a couple of neat a couple of new things this year which is that's the goal for me to try and do a couple of new things every year yeah yeah so yeah um, no you know that's a good reminder i need to do well one i need to buy a uh muffin pan just for the grill and that'd be a good early morning you know go out make some omelets you know some pan omelets. you don't get you don't get yelled at when you use your own muffin tin either <laughs> jim shoemaker says hey i like american bologna <laughs> uh man it's been a long time since i've had a good bologna oh i just found some other yeah this is not uh not new stuff but it's uh it's old favorites if you want to say that Oh, there you go. There's some jerky right there. So that was, uh, and that, that same piece of meat, let's see if this works, was used for that, which is pepper stout beef, but made with brisket. So that's that recipe that I've used. My, it's my wife's favorite recipe where you, oh. you marinate, um, you smoke a chunk of, of uh, greasy uh, fat vein beef. And then you put it over a bed of vegetables and let it reduce down and braise it. And um, so we did that with it. We also did, let's see if we can go back. There's the veggies. So that's the chunk, that's a chunk of brisket that was left over from making the jerky. So that's, I trimmed off the lean portion of the jerky. And then when it got between the lean and the flat, yeah, uh, the flat and the point, the rest of it I smoked, made the pepper stout beef out of. Jer jerky, uh, brisket jerky is really good. Yeah, it's some yeah. of my favorites. Yeah. And there's a, yeah. the sandwich that was made with that. it. Yeah. And then there's the burgers that were also made with the other. So when it, I picked up two briskets and I turned two of them into half jerky, 
one of the other halves I made into the pepper top beef and the other half I made into ground, uh, ground brisket. So that was about pre-cooked. That was about a pound and a half of burger meat, but because it's so fatty, it reduces down so much. Yeah. yeah. What do you use? What do you use in a grinder meat? A Cuisinart uh, mixer with a grinder attachment. Okay. Yeah. I tried to use our KitchenAid for that. I bought a grinder in the. Sorry, that, it was KitchenAid, not Cuisinart. Oh, okay. Yeah. The, I must not have bought a very good one because it, it, it got so jammed up with fat for the. You have to, uh, one trick is to have it cold. Okay. Yeah. So I'll cube it up and then I'll put it back yeah. in the freezer for an hour. Right. Right. Um, when I took a sausage making class, the one, the guy kept on saying, he says, everything has to be cold. And, and yeah. they were using steel grinders and they would put, actually put the parts in the freezer. Yeah. Okay. That's a good, that's a good reminder to get everything super cold. And because when the fat gets it, hot, it gets it. warm. It melts oh, and it's terrible. Yeah. It was a terrible experience. I about yeah. threw the whole thing away. No, I didn't. I did six okay. pounds roughly of ground, uh, ground brisket. I think I picked up. 40 pounds of brisket when I did that. Okay. So I made, uh, I trimmed them up and I made, I think 12 or 15 pounds of jerky and then, uh, the roast and then ground, uh, ground brisket. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I like that idea for the average guy of picking up a nice brisket, regular size, right. And taking the leanest part of it, making jerky out of it, taking another part of it, making some burgers out of it. Then you've got a smaller piece of brisket to then you can just smoke if you have, you know, if you don't need, cause like you don't need the whole brisket. Typically, even with a big party, it's hard to eat all that brisket. Oh, and these, so that's a great these two way. Two briskets I bought didn't, they didn't make it to brisket at all. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They it became was, other things. They all became other things. They became other things. Yeah. It's another. That's another way of, of, uh, of getting it done. Yeah. I need it to, was, it was, it was 40 pounds of brisket. It was 30 pounds of brisket. So when I, by the time I trimmed it up, it was probably about, uh, 25 or 20 pounds of brisket. Yeah. And then I made like 10 pounds of jerky that made probably eight pounds or seven pounds finished. Yeah. And then I made the other, other chunk of it was either ground up or roast. Well, briskets in two parts, right? And yeah, I forget what the point. A flat and a point. Yeah. And you can go in there and separate that yeah. out. Right. Yeah. So I trim, what I do is I, I bought a the, big bowing knife for that. So you yep. can go in there, sh- 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 slice it out. I, I use the, I typically go into about maybe a quarter of the, the of the uh, point, which is a fatty part. And I try and go from that point to the lean part as, as uh jerky. Yeah. Yeah. But it's some of the best jerky for me as well. Like that. It's really good. It's crispy. It's, it kind of just melts in your mouth. Like it's, it's not your, uh, I had to get used to, it's not the tough, like, you know, you're like, oh, I'm going to you know, just tear into this thing. It's pretty, it's pretty tasty. It's like a, a good piece of bacon. It's beef bacon is what it yes. is. <laughs> it's what it is. And actually, yeah. speaking of that, next time you yeah. do brisket, if there's leftovers, pan fry it the next morning. Pan fried, pan fried brisket yeah. as a breakfast side is, is yeah. 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 The, well then if you can render that, we, we rendered a bunch of that fat and kept it and using that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Using that instead, you know, some people keep bacon grease around and yeah. So we tried that a couple of times, man, that's delicious. That is. Yeah. I, I have friends that that's all they do is they make beef tallow. Yeah. Down pretty, all the fat. pretty easy too. Pretty it's yeah. same. Same kind of deal. It'll keep for a while. You don't want to keep it forever. You want to keep it in a dark, cool place. Uh, that kind of, that kind of stuff, uh, just to make sure it doesn't uh, spoil out. But no, some pretty great stuff. Mark, you've given me some. Uh, once again, you've inspired me. I this is what always happens is I come out of a long, dark winter, and I'm like, we gotta cook some new stuff, and uh, and so I, I need to, I need to, I need to get the grill fired up and get some things going. Well, that uh, that bacon wrap prosciutto or the prosciutto wrap brie I did the other day for Easter was was a massive hit. Mm, I, bet, I bet it was. I don't know I, how. How do you not have any like the the you know the the neighborhood just must like live at your place, right? Well, that's why I try and feed them some stuff for once in a while. <laughs> that's right. That's right. You get anything you need. Joe says uh, yes. Can recommend brisket with fried eggs. Yeah. Toast. Yeah. 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 
it's it's uh i tried it one day i just i looked at all the pressure we had it was sliced up i'm like i'm gonna try just pan frying some of this and with some friends staying over and he's like this is unreal like this is yeah yeah well it takes but it's it's it takes some work like you know you 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 got to prepare i mean i find like with the jerky you know i think about it it can't just you can't just go like oh i want some jerky today you've gotta okay i I need to make sure i get the meat i'm i like it it frozen when i'm cutting it but not too frozen because if it's too frozen it's really hard to cut but yeah you don't you don't want it thawed out because it doesn't slice as well so you got to get the right temperature i'm moving that to a bowl putting the marinade in it that we're letting it marinate overnight right i bring it out add some salt and pepper to it um uh start you know fire up the grill get that going then that's a five or six hour process of it setting on the grill so if i want to time the beef jerky for an event on saturday night that's thursday like we're prepping yeah. on Thursday to get yep. that thing, you know, to get it done. I was talking to one of her relatives one time and we we're talking about smoking and she's like, Oh, that takes too much time. That takes too much time. She says, I, I want stuff done like quickly. And they helped me out with something. So as a thank you, they're five hours away. So they acted as a, a an intermediary on something I was buying. So we drove down to pick it up and I gave them a little barbecue gift bag and I gave them some pulled pork and some brisket and stuff. And, I get home and then, and then my nephew writes to me and says, so uh, how long does it take to cook this pulled pork? I'm like, oh, that was about like 16 hours. <laughs> and he goes, I can see why it tastes so good. Yeah. <laughs> so, so this from the guy who wanted everything immediately. All of a yeah. sudden he's like, yeah, okay, I can see that. Yeah. Now. yeah. Well, and you're not doing a lot while it's on. You pulled know. pork is the easiest thing to do because you put it on, you don't touch it again for, I put it on at nine o'clock. I typically pull it off at three o'clock in the afternoon. Nine o'clock at night to three o'clock in the afternoon, um, wrap it and then pull it three or four hours later. So it's it's the easiest thing to do on the barbecue for me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, everything else I do it takes a lot more of attention. That is uh, that's an easy one. Yeah. Well, I'm I I am I learned this whole pork this whole hog. Yeah, pork that's an interesting way of doing it. Yeah, and and I and I stacked it like when I when I put it on, I put the ribs on the bottom, the ham next, the shoulder, then the loin. That was a huge mistake. The loin needs to go on the bottom because it yeah, it's very dry. On. Yeah, so loin on the bottom. Uh, no, I should. I, I I will the next time. Well, it was the first time I was doing it. I didn't know what I was doing, so. Uh, I think this time, instead of stacking them, I'm just going to set them side by side in the tray. And that tray fills up with juice and keeps everything kind of moist. I would probably put the ham at the bottom and the loin at the bottom. Okay. And I would put the shoulder and the ribs on the top. On top. Yeah. Because they're the fattiest and they're going to drain all the juices out. Good idea. Yeah. I got one of those little trays, you know, like you would get for a a banana bread or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. It makes two, four, six, eight, eight pounds. Uh, and then you bring that in and, and pull them out. Like the bones just come right out of the ribs. Right. Kind of thing. Just, I've got the, you know, just pull it all together. Yeah. And I was super surprised. First time I was like, uh, it was magic. It was like, this is what pulled pork is supposed to taste like. Now you got to see if you can do it again. Yeah. 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 Well, maybe I'll be pulling out. Uh, you know, tomorrow I'll be pulling out the pieces so we can do it Sunday. <laughs> Again, you got to prep, right? Yes, you gotta prep, absolutely. You got you to prep for Yeah, it. we got two inches of rain or three inches of rain coming this weekend, so I won't be doing much this weekend. Yeah, we got rain tomorrow, but I can I could pull all those components out tonight and get them thawing so they'd be ready to go for an early Sunday morning because that's a six hour, even just that low and slow for six ribs hours. Are, ribs are six hours. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the part that's got to reduce well ribs in the your pork shoulder might even need a little longer than that. It, it did just fine. Yeah. We were like six or seven, you know, but I threw it on at six in the morning, but it's only two pounds, just two pounds. Yeah. That's the nice thing about it. It's just two pounds. And you're kind of braising it a little bit by cooking it in its uh, juices. Or if you're doing it on its on top of the grill, it's out by its it's, it's dry heat where if you're putting in juices, you got more thermal mass around the, so that might make a difference. Yeah. I'll take some pictures. We'll we'll get it. Next uh, year's. 
yeah, we'll get it for, well, yeah, maybe it'll show up a little bit earlier. Can you hang out for a second? Yep. Before I close this thing up. Okay. A couple of, Mar- first of all, Mark, thanks for coming on. Like I said, I always get now, now I want to go now. I'm super hungry. I may have to go up and pull some bacon out of the fridge. <laughs> have a little snack. <laughs> have a little snack before I go to bed. Um, so thanks for coming on. You, you always do a bang up job. I appreciate it. Um, if you want to leave a message for the show, don't forget, you can send us a message, homegadgetgeeks.com. There's a little blue message icon in the bottom right-hand corner. Click on it, leave a message, send me an email. We'll play it on the show. Love to hear your questions, comments, whatever uh, about it. Jump in there. We'll love to do it. Uh, the average guy.tv platform, both web and media hosting powered by Maple Grove partners. Of course, you know, that's Christian Get secure, reliable, high-speed hosting from people that you know, and you trust. For more information, I mean, he's been hosting this site for 10 years. For more information, visit maplegrovepartners.com. And I think he's still got some plans for 10 bucks a month. So if you're interested in getting a website started, he will help you get that done as well. Don't forget, I mentioned this in the show, but when you're not grilling, you should be doing HelloFresh, and they've got some great plans. Uh, right now, you can get $110 off your first five boxes of HelloFresh. You should give it a try. 40, do- 40 bucks off the first box alone. Check it out. TheAverageGuy.tv slash HelloFresh, if you haven't checked that out yet. But after this show, you should just be making your own HelloFresh, is kind of what I'm saying. And uh, But not all of us can do that, so give it a try. You can contact the show. Send me an email, Jim at TheAverageGuy.tv. Find me on Twitter at Jay Collison. And we want to thank you. I, thanks for listening. So we, we got some new subscribers. You know what? We've got some new subscribers that I probably haven't even heard from yet. We've been doing this show for 11 years. If you've joined in the last couple of years, shoot me an email, jim at theaverageguy.tv. Just introduce yourself. I'd love to I'd love to find out who you are. Or if you've been listening to the show a long time, you can still shoot me an email, jim at theaverageguy.tv. I'd love to hear from you. We are live every Thursday, 8 p.m. Central, 9 Eastern, out here at theaverageguy.tv slash live. We've got some shows lined up over the next couple of weeks. Jay Franzi is coming back next week. Uh, he'll be on, uh, it's, uh, by the way, it's May the 4th. So I told Jay, be ready for a star Wars themed show. Not very often it falls on May the 4th. So we're going to do something around star Wars theme next week. And, uh, Dan Lefebvre is coming back and I got Bob and Ryan coming on here the first part of June. So make sure you join us live. If you've never joined us live, get that done. Thanks for coming out tonight, Joe, Jim, um, JDK was out there. Brian was out there. Jay a little bit earlier. Thanks for coming out. With that, we'll say goodbye.